Hey, what's going on, guys? Meteorologist Jonathan Kegas with you, coming at you from sunny Orlando, Florida, from our New Six studios. And we are talking about the tropics. Still relatively quiet. There are a couple of things out there, at least one thing, way out by Africa that the Hurricane Center is tracking. We're going to get to that and a lot more in this video. Again, if you may have heard about potential tropical cyclone 4, it's a designation that the Hurricane Center gives. It's relatively new. We're going to go over that, but it never developed, so we did not have a tropical cyclone, that's a depression, or a storm in the Atlantic Basin develop out of the deal. We're going to take a look at that. New African wave, though, that just rolled off of Africa yesterday. It's still dealing with a pretty hostile environment. There's a lot of dust, a lot of wind shear, a lot of dry, stable air out there in the short term. Over the next week to 10 days, we alluded to this a little bit in our last video of Tropics Watch, that it's going to try the basin as a whole to become a little more conducive to development as we get into the end of August here, that last several day stretch of August. So we're going to go and take a closer look at that a little bit long range over that next seven to 10 day stretch. First though, want to talk about what was potential tropical cyclone for? You may ask, what is that? Why is it called a cyclone in this part of the world? Well, a cyclone is a storm anywhere along the world, around the world. When it's in the tropics, it's known as a tropical cyclone. There's a set definition that I'll show you in a second, but here is what's left of what was potential tropical cyclone four. You see the rain moving into parts still of drought-stricken South Texas, so getting some beneficial rain as a result of this tropical wave that has pushed on shore now. So again, development chances are now zero with this entity as it's on land moving out of the Gulf of Mexico. So some good news there. So it's all semantics, but there is a set meteor meteorological requirement for something to become a depression, a tropical storm, or of course a hurricane, but it's all under that umbrella, scientifically, of a tropical cyclone. So the reason why we never saw potential tropical cyclone four become a depression or named tropical storm was because it never had a closed well-defined circulation at the surface. It had a little bit of spin in it. That was because of a mid-level circulation. We always look at several levels here. It's almost like a stack of pancakes. You need to have all of the levels all be on the same kind of thing. When your pancakes are out of whack, then it kind of falls off your plate. So it's same kind of deal in the tropics. We never really had that low-level circulation there. We really didn't have thunderstorms around that uh, circulation. If it did, it would have been a depression because the wind speeds never got above 35 miles an hour. So it would have been a tropical depression. So it would not have gotten its name because it needs to be a tropical storm to be named. So there's some tropical stuff for you, if you will. We're going to take a basin-wide view now, go through every section of the Atlantic Basin, which is the Gulf of Mexico, the Caribbean, and then, of course, the Atlantic Ocean, we're looking really, really nice now in the Gulf of Mexico after that disturbance, again, that had a shot to develop. Uh, so we're looking good in the short term, at least in the Gulf of Mexico. You see that they're really hardly a cloud in the sky. In the Caribbean, it's been a little unsettled. We have a tropical wave that's moving through Jamaica. So I know I'm watching from Jamaica into Cuba. We've had some unsettled weather that is courtesy of a tropical wave that is about right here. You see the darker reds and yellows on your screen there. That's the satellite picking up on some thunderstorm activity as it pushes towards the Yucatan. Outside shot, we could see something try to develop, but still there's not looking too healthy. Inclement weather though expected on the island of Jamaica. Same deal as you get towards Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands uh, with some thunderstorm activity around. Nothing organized, nothing expected to develop there. Trinidad and Tobago, we've had some unsettled weather over the past couple of days as well with some thunderstorms. You see more right along the South American coastline. That is not expected to organize either, just some unorganized thunderstorm activity uh, moving on through. Again, closer look here at the Caribbean islands uh, from Puerto Rico down into the Lesser Antilles for us there. There's the nasty thunderstorms that have been in around Trinidad, Tobago, getting into Kingstown as well, Fort de France. We have been dealing with some of those thunderstorms. 
Here we go out into the main development region now, and things, again, okay. It's August 21st, and typically we would see this lighting up a little more. Thankfully, we are not. All of this mess is courtesy of the intertropical convergence zone. We have the winds that are coming out of uh, the, the trade winds coming out of Africa. And then you have the convergence with the winds coming out of the southern hemisphere as well. And you get this flare up of thunderstorm activity here. There's really nothing that has isolated itself either from this massive cluster of thunderstorms. And then again, that is a good thing. The wave that we are eventually going to be tracking that does have the potential to develop is this guy here, right around the Cabo Verde Islands. But it's nothing to write home about. The thunderstorm activity is very limited. You really can't even call it thunderstorms. It's more showery activity out by the Cabo Verde Islands. And again, it's courtesy of the dry, dusty air. 20% shot, though, the Hurricane Center gives this to develop. Over the next five days, 0% shot over the next two. And it really, if it does develop, it's going to be slow. It's going to be gradual in this yellow blobby area here. That's going to be the area of potential development. And then if it does survive and if there is still an entity, if it beats out some of the wind shear and dry air that remains in this area of the world, it would likely be somewhere out here that would really have the best shot for development. So we'll keep our eyes peeled again for the northern islands as we get towards Puerto Rico. Um, some of the Virgin Islands will need to watch this as well, again, for something potentially there in the next week. Again, it's nothing to write home about, just something to, to keep an eye on, of course, just because it is August. Again, the Atlantic Basin, pretty hostile now. Closer look at the thunderstorms related to the ITCZ, that intertropical convergence zone. Again, our wave is right in here. It's looking pretty sad. Again, good news. And then those other thunderstorms attached to that convergence zone. You see the wind there, the green lines coming together. And that's where we help to get that flare-up of thunderstorms. And that's been one of the reasons why places like Trinidad, Tobago, some of the lesser Antilles, the windward, leeward islands, have seen that inclement weather. Nothing organized, nothing organized tropically anyway, but some of those thunderstorms. Closer look at the dust. We always talk about this, and this is something that has dominated the season Really, since before we had that first big plume of dust come out in May, and it's really never stopped. We have it pretty high concentration. Of course, there's the Sahara Desert. There's the dust, and we're going to have another round come into the Caribbean islands over the next few days. But this is where our little wave is now, so it's ingesting that dry, dusty air, that stable air as a result of the Saharan air layer that still extends through most of the main development region. So if this does develop, it is going to be slow. It's going to have that slow development opportunity as it works its way over the next few days. I want to show you this hurricane index. It takes a bunch of things into consideration, water temperature, wind shear, atmospheric conditions. And you see where we're looking for the green, that's where it's all systems go. That's where it is very unfavorable for development over the next few days. Our wave is way out here still. Where it's red, that's where we do have conditions a little more favorable. So this is looking at particularly Sunday, and then over the next few days, really things don't change. So if that wave can survive to be somewhere around the Turks and Caicos, certainly closer to the United States, that's where we could have some issues for something to try to spin up. It's really going to have a battle in the short term again. And that is why it only has a 50% chance to develop um, over the next several days. want to show you the water temperature also out here. And the one thing with it being so quiet, there is a lot of untapped fuel out there. So again, we really... Obviously, we never want something to get going, but certainly now as there's not a lot of cooler water that has been churned up by systems past because you really haven't had much. So these water temperatures, jet fuel out here into the central Atlantic, 85 degrees there through the Bahamas, also 85 off the southeast coast of the U.S. and the mid to upper 80s through the Gulf Stream specifically. 
86 there in the Gulf of Mexico, just north of Cuba. And we're talking low to mid 80s as well throughout most of the Caribbean. So that's going to be something, again, that will become a storyline if we got something going. And again, thankfully, at, in the short term anyway, there's nothing really to write home about. I want to show you this. I show you this a lot. This is the model spin, if you will. The low-level vorticity is what we call it scientifically. It's uh, the American resolution, the American solution here. And you kind of see some of these spirals off of um, Africa here. This first one is the wave that is highlighted here. There's not much there. And this is exactly what I'm talking about, that it's going to take a huge battle in a big underdog, if you will, for that first one to develop as there's nothing closed there. And we're looking specifically for like a ball. Look at the one behind it. I'll get into that in a second. But something that's bright red and looks like a little ball, if you will. The second one behind it that is not yet been highlighted by the Hurricane Center because that complex of thunderstorms is still over Central Africa. So it's over land. But the one that emerges behind it, you see the date here. This is going to be as we get into the last few days of August. That one, relatively speaking, likely going to have a better chance for develop for development. But really, that first one, pretty low as you get towards the Caribbean islands anyway. If there's any entity left, we would watch it closely out in here. Uh, through the Turks and Caicos, the Bahamas, maybe the southeast coast of the United States for it to do a little something something. But you see there through the Caribbean, it's going to have a hard time develop, developing. So at least some good news again in the short term. Where we are in the hurricane season, again, we are in the climatologically now most active period of the hurricane season. More than 90% of the major hurricanes develop from August 20th beyond. So that's where we are. This yellow line here. The peak, of course, climatologically is September 10th before we see a sharp decrease in, t in activity. Again, climatologically within that short increase in uh, activity again in October. Alex, Bonnie, and Colin, those are the three short-lived, very weak systems that we have had to date. Danielle is the next name on the list. Again, other channels have already named Danielle several times. We don't do that here until the Hurricane Center does that, of course, because the last two waves, due to the hostile environment that we've talked about on this channel, continues to dominate the Atlantic Basin in the short term. So again, Danielle is the next name storm, still has not been used because PTC-4, Potential Tropical Cyclone 4, that was designated, had the potential to, but again, the environment, not that conducive to supporting really any tropical systems at this time. That is likely going to change as we talked about last week and then again today as we get rolling towards the last really five, six days of August. So stay tuned. Again, remain vigilant. That whole deal as we are heading towards the peak of hurricane season in the short term, things are still looking pretty good. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, like, and share this with your friends as we continue to monitor hurricane season 2022. Again, all is quiet in the short term. Thanks for watching, guys.